As of this week, Fallout 76's massive Wastelanders DLC is now two months old. In this video, what I want to do is kind of give a brief review of the DLC in general, but more specifically, look at the lasting impact this had on the game. Prior to release, many were looking at this DLC as potentially being a savior for Fallout 76, taking the game in a new direction with dialogue choices and human NPCs, but did it deliver on that? After getting to experience and digest this content for those two months, what kind of changes did it bring to the game overall and its lasting effect on the game? If you guys enjoy the content, you can get subscribed or even follow me on some other socials. I have a link to my Twitter down below. One of the first things I want to take a look at with Wastelanders was easily its biggest new addition, the brand new quest line it brought to Fallout 76. And really, I feel like with this quest line, you have to look at it in two different ways. On one hand, what a new player experience would be like for this, because that is vastly different to what a returning or legacy player's experience with this quest line would be. Of course, there's some overlap, and in particular with the returning player's experience, a lot of that is encapsulated in the new player's experience. But just overall, as a story expansion for Fallout 76, or even a single player expansion, I think this really delivered. The story itself holistically was pretty good. It was definitely a good enough type situation. I saw some people saying the writing on this was phenomenal, some of Bethesda's best, and I wholeheartedly disagree. The writing was alright. The overall story of breaking into a vault hypothetically to get some gold, if that's what's actually in there, was pretty compelling and easy to get interested in, but where I think Wastelanders really blew it out of the water was with some of the characters. For me, this was by far the most memorable part. Getting to meet new and unique individuals as you're playing through the story and hear what exactly they're doing in this world, or how they ended up where they are right now, with the settlers or the raiders. As far as the two different quest lines go, the settler side versus the raider side, I feel like each of these were unique enough in their own rights, despite having the exact same goal in the end, that it kept you interested in doing quests for both of them. In particular for me, the raiders really delivered as they were more character focused while the settlers were more objective focused or finding some kind of tool. And although many of those newly introduced characters are very interesting and some even had quite a bit of depth to them, oddly enough some characters were just totally underutilized like the overseer, what is arguably the biggest character and most recognizable name going into the DLC. There are a few quests for the overseer as I'm sure many of you know at this point, but after an hour or two, you kind of just leave her there at her house and move on with life, which to me just seemed odd. You really would think she would have much larger of a role in this overall expansion. The new player experience for the story isn't quite as good in my eyes, mainly because to actually beat Wastelanders, there are a few artificial limits in that you'll have to go back and do things with the old original Fallout 76 story. And I feel like in some ways, the quests of Wastelanders were so good, while the quests of Vanilla Fallout 76 were just not as good, that you could really see the quality difference while doing one versus the other. It's just far more interesting to talk to human NPCs and do missions for them, compared to just reading a holotape and then doing a mission based off what you read. But Bethesda did provide some attention to detail here, giving some additional dialogue options to some of those lasting NPCs, and even further, making it so there are some new characters scattered throughout some of those old questing locations. And even though I didn't love actually having to do the quests, the way you're introduced into this lore, both the old and the new, in a kind of connective way, was pretty cool, and that part was done well. To progress the new quests, you definitely had to know about the old stuff, so that's kind of why you had to do them. So overall for me, the story itself really stood the test of time. Two months later, even after that initial excitement faded, it still is fun. A good experience in Fallout 76, and even just independent, a good Fallout questline. And much of this was really carried out by those dialogue choices, the change we saw in the dialogue from Fallout 4 and of course vanilla Fallout 76, to now actually having options with Wastelanders, and better functionality than some of the past games. It really is peak Fallout dialogue. Although when it comes to this, that is one of the issues that comes with the lasting experience of Wastelanders. You don't really continue to use this. When the Wastelanders update immediately came out, you'll notice a vastly transformed world. There's a ton of new human NPCs everywhere, several locations got comprehensive overhauls, and you'll immediately notice this if you were a player. And of course now you could actually talk to people, which is huge. Except two months later after actually completing the main story and then playing it again on a newer character, you start to realize after you beat the main story, you're not doing much talking, much talking at all. Although technically, yes, you are sometimes talking to human NPCs with daily quests or even just miscellaneous conversations with your companions, 95% of the time I find myself skipping through these very quickly. It's not like I was actually talking to them for the dialogue and 
Most of the time, I would just much rather it gives me the quest without even having to interact with them. The dialogue was good for the story, but it doesn't continue to be a factor, at least not until the next major story DLC comes along. And in many ways, this is true for the Wastelander story overall. It doesn't have that world-changing event. Even though you do some fairly substantial things and you gain access to new areas, there's nothing quite like blowing up the Institute where you really affect the world of Fallout 76 and then start to feel those effects and the epilogue of the story. Now of course Fallout 76 is an always online game so this is to be expected, but in general throughout all of Wastelanders, even though there are choices, you could choose who lives or who dies, this really doesn't have a major impact after you beat everything, and even during the main story. The choices are more so of a facade. It's taking Avenue A or B to large in part end up at the exact same goal. Most people will not be regretting making one decision or another in the long term. Unless for some reason you just decided to skip one of the quest lines because you technically can skip the raider or settler quest line. The new additions as far as human NPCs and overhauls to existing locations are definitely felt even still. Exploring Fallout 76 is more fun than ever with Wastelanders. Even after two months, I'm still finding new stuff. And even further, the visual improvements that were brought to the game with this update you still notice. Fallout 76 looks better than ever and probably the best looking Fallout game to date. There's times even still after playing this update for two months that I stop and really take it all in, just awing at how pretty they made this game. It's still no Red Dead Redemption, but it definitely has its moments. But this still feels like something that perhaps could be improved on with future DLCs, perhaps some real consequence from my choice. Yeah, all of the people at the raider settlement get mad at me because I kept the gold and the settlers because I sided with the raiders, but it's really just passive dialogue that you don't even pay attention to at all. It would've been cool if the decisions you make during the Wastelander story actually have a lasting impact that will change your experience in the epilogue versus one of your friends, where in right now in Fallout 76 that really doesn't exist. But the biggest impact I have when it comes to the Wastelander's main story is it gets me really excited for the future. Bethesda did a good job with this initial story and if they continue to create content like this I will continue to be interested in future story updates. Again it wasn't my favorite DLC for any Fallout but it was good enough and definitely good enough to get me excited for whatever they do next. But of course that story update was really only one part of this game. As next up we do have some of the more lasting experiences. The things that were intended to be grinded or for you to do after you beat Wastelanders. Two new events were added with this. Riding Shotgun and radiation rumble. Each of these events in their own right are good new additions to Fallout 76. The only problem is they're just exceptionally rare. They were added into the natural cycle of events. So in Fallout 76 servers from time to time, new events will pop up and you'll be able to complete them. But considering there are so many other events on this list, the likelihood of one of these two popping up is just really low. In particular with radiation rumble, it's a relatively difficult event, you can't manually spawn it yourself, and it does definitely require some more coordination than certain other ones, especially if you want top tier rewards. As such, even when it does spawn and you get a couple of players active and doing it, sometimes I still wouldn't get the maximum rewards or wouldn't even be able to complete it at all. There's nothing really wrong with either the two new events themselves, but now, two months later, I've only done them a handful of times, and that's not for a lack of trying. I think a lot of players would still rather have a heavier bias towards making them spawn compared to some of the other public events that players have completed numerous times over the past year and a half. So overall when it comes to those new events, it's not really that they're bad, it's just that it wasn't enough of an improvement on the event system to make it not feel repetitive, because the vast majority of these events have been there since day one. And the reason this all becomes very relevant is when you get into that endgame grind. The endgame grind for Fallout 76 is now almost become triple faceted. You have to increase your faction reputation to unlock the ability to unlock certain rewards. You have to get gold bullions, which you can do by completing some of these events to actually purchase the endgame rewards. And then you need to kill legendary enemies to scrap legendary weapons or armors to get legendary modules to craft those endgame rewards. And the way all three are implemented, each has their own daily cap. So you can only make a certain amount of progress in a given day. Except for faction reputation, technically that's unlimited, but 
the repeatable part takes so long that it may as well just be the daily cap. As a result of this, to actually get some of this cool new content, the new weapons and armors with Wastelanders, you're going to be redoing this a lot. Redoing those same dailies a lot, redoing some of these in-game events a lot, and of course, all throughout, trying to kill as many legendary enemies as possible to maximize your likelihood of getting a good legendary roll on a new item once you unlock it. And for me at least, this is the bad side of the Wastelanders update. After two months, I find myself just bored and totally abandoning these systems. Now on paper, I totally get why Bethesda added this. They were looking for a way to keep players logging in daily, which is a fairly common thing you see in many online MMOs games. So from Bethesda's perspective, hey, we have some cool new weapons and armors, we'll add them in for free, and we'll put them behind this wall where a few months of grinding and you could get many of them. The problem becomes, now two months later, there really isn't anything to do with the new items outside of just grinding grind more. You see, the thing with the endgame grind is, you don't really start it, you can't unlock the gold bullion currency until after you beat Wastelanders. And once you beat Wastelanders, you have cleared out most of the new content. The vast majority of this update was story content. So the cycle I found myself getting into was, I would log on, do the daily quest for each of the factions, which were just unfun. They were immensely simple, just go here, get this, return. As well as doing events each day to actually get my gold bullion max. And the event part was definitely a lot more fun. When you had a team together, you were all playing collectively towards this common goal of additional gold bullions, perhaps you get a few legendaries during the event, except once you finally do this, you unlock this cool new weapon and now you have to re-roll it several times to get a good legendary variant. The only thing to do next is continue the grind. Use that new legendary weapon to grind for another one? Which okay, definitely, some people probably enjoy this aspect of the game, but for me, I just found it to be redundant and not a ton of fun. Such that about a month ago after getting a couple of the first weapons and armors and that cool jetpack, I just kinda gave up on doing the daily grind. Those faction dailies were just getting miserable. And it's not even like there's gonna be a ton of new content on the horizon. We know that update 20 is bringing seasons, which is going to be another grind that you can do to get cosmetics or other in-game rewards and public teams. Each of those are cool, interesting features, definitely healthy for the game, but it's not like there's a ton of incentive or a ton of new stuff to actually do. It's a ton of new stuff to grind towards doing the same things over and over again. And I think looking back in hindsight, one of the big reasons this is unsatisfying is Bethesda made it so you can't start the grind truly until after you beat the main story. Taking your time with Fault 76's Wastelander story is a lot of fun. Going through the quests at your own rate, doing some of the old quests as you do some of the new quests, getting acquainted with the economy, but since this grind for gold bullions takes so long at over 20 weeks to unlock just all of the new armors and weapons, it almost incentivizes you in a way to rush through it a bit quicker. You want to start getting that new stuff because you see your friends using that new stuff, you want it for yourself. And I think now that it's been out for a couple of months, Bethesda should just make it so you could start earning gold bullions or treasury notes whenever in the game, even if you haven't completed Wastelanders. So you can actually grind towards that endgame content while also enjoying the new content that was added. And I know when it comes to this aspect of the game, some people will disagree with me. They don't mind the grind or perhaps even some people enjoy it. But for me, it just became repetitive without a tangible reward. The new weapon was cool, but nine times out of 10, it A, wasn't better than the weapon I was already using, and B, I didn't have any new content to use the weapon with, so I wasn't really incentivized to continue progress towards it. I was grinding for new stuff just to use it to grind for more new stuff. Now down the road, as new content does come out, I will definitely be returning to this. Things like the Wendigo Colossus event, or even more substantial, some of the future quest lines like Steel Dawn. Then I'll probably just incorporate this in my natural form of play. But for now, after those two months, I really just moved on to other things. That really focuses on much of the new content that came with Wastelanders, what landed for me and what hasn't landed for me after two months. But one of the other very important aspects of the game is the bugginess and the exploits. And this is something Wastelanders did a very good job at addressing right off the bat. We saw a huge wave of bug fixes, several exploits getting addressed right as that update came out. And even in the aftermath of this, as dupes popped up in the game, Bethesda has been much quicker to address them following Wastelanders, not only doing the initial fixes, but trying to keep up with it and doing maintenance. There was a stretch of two weeks where vending machines, which is a pretty fundamental feature, were disabled and that's frustrating. But I would say broadly, if you compare the past two months to the six before it, Bethesda has been doing a lot better as far as the exploits go. Where they haven't been doing a lot better is when it comes to anti-cheat and some of the just regular bugs in the game. 
There are certain bugs that were introduced with Wastelanders or made worse by Wastelanders, like this frustrating fast travel bug, or one of the things that came in an update a month after Wastelanders where you can't use hotkeys right after a nuclear winter match starts, which is kind of fundamental to the game, or even how the Scorch Beast Queen can no longer have its limbs damaged, then those two months have just not been addressed. So while on one hand, Wastelanders did a good job at being a big bug fixing update, there are still things that are just very Bethesda after the fact. Like I know the Battle Royale mode isn't the most popular, but it's been a month and you still can't use hotkeys in the first couple minutes of a match. Hotkeys are pretty essential to winning initial engagements as you're looting a ton of stuff and want to switch from one weapon to the next without having to go in your pit boy which is really clunky. That's crazy, but that still hasn't been fixed. Or even some of these other bugs that they've been aware of for 7 weeks and just still have yet to get addressed. Things are definitely better, but it's not like Bethesda has turned a totally new leaf and is suddenly this grade A company when it comes to maintenance of Fallout 76. And that exact same thing applies to anti-cheat. There were some anti-cheat improvements with Wastelanders, but it's clearly not enough. You can still find hacks all throughout Nuclear Winter on PC at least, and if they want people to take the mode more seriously, it needs an overhaul. So overall for me at least, after two months, I think Wastelanders is an amazing single player DLC for Fallout 76. But in my eyes, it starts to fall short when you look at the aspects beyond that. The endgame grind for me just wasn't enjoyable. There wasn't enough content to keep me entertained or coming back to that grind, and in the wake of Wastelanders, Bethesda has not been able to address their reputation as a company that puts out buggy games. It's still there and they're still living up to it. Overall, I'm still very excited for the future. Wastelanders has its flaws, but it still was a massive improvement for this game. And Bethesda managed to make content that was fun and exciting for multiplayer and single player fans alike, which is definitely not easy to do and a huge feat on their part. I'm really excited to see where this goes next. There's still a lot of work to be done, but overall, those are my thoughts on Wastelanders two months after its initial release. And I would love to hear from you guys down below in the comments. What do you think? Have you stuck with the game? Have you continued playing even two months later? Or was it just a few weeks of content for you when you were satisfied or maybe unsatisfied? As always, again with this one, I thank you you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.